7 a.m. bulletin from the Mobile Weather Bureau. Hurricane Camille, a Force 5 storm, has now turned to the north and is expected to strike the coast of Mississippi. Elsewhere, before. Hurricane Camille oh, involved one of the worst storms play, ever recorded, struck the coast of Mississippi today, ravaging the quiet southern backwater 60 miles east of New Orleans, with sustained winds well in excess of 200 miles an hour. It begins with low pressure, a weakness. Encircling wind. Small but extremely intense storm arrived on a high tide. Tropical depression. And pushed a 30-foot wall of water over the small town strung out along the usually docile Gulf of Mexico. It worsens. 100,000 coastal residents were estimated to have evacuated ahead of the storm. A spiral tight. But many stayed behind, and authorities fear that the death toll will be high when the waters recede and relief efforts begin. And the weakness spawns a whirlwind. Mississippi, where the solid ground gives way and I don't know where I stand. Your daughter has returned. And after all these years, I'm still sad and angry. Get that rope over here. Watch those boats there. Might still tip over there. Daryl, you two go over and check behind them boats. Look under them boards there, too. Watch out for snakes. Keep an eye out for them dogs, too. Uh, check along the water. The whole shoreline. The guards said they let at least two of them crazy boys out here. She's alive. As well as Red Cross shelters, we have passed Christian and Bay Saint. Give us again information. We'll be given every half hour on Red Cross and Salvation Army food and clothing distribution. You have no centers. idea who she is. Additionally, the federal government is organizing convoys of house trailers, emergency generators, and food supplies. And Vice President Agnew arriving on the scene conceded that Hurricane Camille was the worst storm to ever hit North America. Dr. Claiborne. Water. Hello there. I'm Dr. Clavin. This is Dr. Walsh. place is gone, Mother. I've got nothing left but a bed, and it's 20 feet up in a tree. The coast is wiped out. This is only temporary. Very temporary.
You said you'd watch her. I'm Dr. Walsh. You've been through quite an ordeal. Can you tell me your name? Are you hungry? not leaving. You want me to find her family? Don't you rather we moved in? I guarantee you, Shane, from Sister Island. I saw you yesterday. Do you know this girl? Yesterday, I need to find a family. Nobody like that around here, ma'am. My name is Roy Earl Petrie. Pearl was my friend. I've lived on this island all my life. One of my earliest memories is at the dead crabber's house. Damn it, Roy Searle! Oh, Pearl! You ain't doing nothing. Come over here and get this boy. Hey, See that flower? Yeah. Ain't that pretty? Yeah. Look at that flower. I guess I was about seven when J.D. Lynch come to the island. When he bought the marina, he said he got the dead crabber's house along with it. And he moved right in with Esther, his wife, and his daughter, Luann. That's when the troubles began. First with the girl in the window, then with Mr. J.D. himself him and his crazy-eyed wife, the liar. Come on.
Well, she's eating. And that's all. She hasn't responded to anything. She hasn't even moved. Yes, she has. This morning, she was facing the fireplace. August 21st. The girl and I have now been at Mother's for three days. Her behavior is peculiar and contradictory. At first, she seemed completely unresponsive to any auditory or visual stimuli, but then she blinked at the flash of a camera and reacted to a door closing. Yesterday, she slapped a mosquito, so I know there's a light in there somewhere, but how much? It's hard to say. She looks autistic. Well, aren't you being a little quick on your diagnosis? You shouldn't have left her there with Rose. You know, Rose would probably forget the girl's even there. What about our patients? Till two weeks ago, I ran this clinic by myself. I suppose I can handle them until the people get here from Children's Services. When will that be? With this hurricane, who knows? If we could just find her people, and she must be from the island. Dory, if she was born on the island, I would have delivered her. Even if she's raised there, I would have treated her. And there's anyone born on the island since Roy Searle Petrie. Look, I'll, I'll call down there, see if I can speed up the social service people. In the meantime, no one expects you to solve the girl's problems. It has now been a week since my exile from the clinic. Mother has named the girl Camille after the storm. Her brooding presence is reminding me of a little girl from another time. And I wonder why am I back at Mother's house after all these years? My mother, the woman who cannot be reached, who cannot be touched. God or man. It's not so easy being a mother. For me, it was frightening that I was all alone. You weren't alone. I was there. You were always off in those woods of yours while I was trying to make us a living. Until you decided to destroy everything. I think I was trying to tell you that you weren't alone. Is that why I was sent away? I just couldn't handle you. I was needy. Lori, if it's all my fault, why'd you come back to Mississippi? Mm. I thought it'd be quiet here. I'm Eunice Shelby from the State Department of Social Services. Have you tried to clean her up? It upsets her. Every time I've tried to clean her up or even brush her hair, she starts rocking like she's doing now. <sighs> what are you going to do with her? I'm going to ask you to assume temporary custody. Me? Mm -hmm. Here? No. No. You said she'd made some adjustment. Any more trauma? Absolutely not, Dr. Walsh. Our facilities were limited before Look, the storm. Mrs. Shelby, I have a job to do, and I suggest that you do yours. You think I'm trying to avoid doing my job? This isn't even my house. I guess it would be all right. What? I'm 
knew you could walk. She doesn't seem to like it. We might as well try to acclimate her while she's here. Maybe Camille likes things the way they are. September 8th. The girl has been with us three weeks, and there is now no question that she can hear and see quite well. But she has yet to utter a single sound. If you ever do talk, there's a lot I'd like to know. Like, why do you eat with your hands and drink only from that tin cup? Why do you hear bugs and rain but ignore a human voice? Why are you so in love with the sun and the sky? horrified of the earth as if you'd never seen it before. Why do you act afraid? And why won't you even look at me? announcements, Hancock County authorities say that power has been restored north of Highway 90 and that most of the city will have power by tomorrow. For outlying coastal communities, officials say the wait may be months. And Highway 601 is now open. This is Clark's Prince of Denmark March. another week and I have yet to uncover anything in the literature that sounds like Camille she has uttered no more sounds though her emerging curiosity suggests intelligence but everything seems foreign to her were it not for the St. Jude medal around her neck I'd think she was a creature from a wild and unknown land She's shown interest in anything besides that cop. You know, why would somebody who's scared silly of the outdoors come attached to a painting of the garden?
were either abandoned or locked up their entire childhood and they exhibit the same traits of retardation, poorly integrated perception and motor skills, absence of language, lack of emotional expression, lack of human attachments, withdrawal. Maybe the reason Camille likes the sky is that wherever she was locked up, she could see it. If she'd never seen the ground, she'd be afraid of it. It would explain why no one's claimed her. They're not about to step up now. If her problems stem from deprivation, she may be reachable. The key is to confirm her past, so I'm going to start over and go to the island. Dory, stop. I thought you wanted this clinic. You know I do. Well, then why have you suddenly decided to become a psychiatrist? Dr. Claiborne, it wasn't my idea to bring the girl to my mother's house in the first place, and it certainly wasn't my idea to let her stay. Maybe not. But I had to insist that the social service people come down here, take her somewhere where they might be able to help her. Now I find out she's still at your mother's. That was mother's doing. Well. We have a clinic clean now. I think you ought to consider letting the girl go. October 1st. Even though my diagnosis is tentative, the thought that Camille could be brought into the world excites me. But all the literature suggests that successful treatment of cases like Camille's requires bonding with a maternal figure, and starting at the beginning, like a baby and its mother. She's still clinging to me. She won't even look at you. She was afraid of Abby a minute ago. Maybe she's never seen a dog. Just heard one. It would make sense that she responds to the things she knows. I wish I didn't always feel you had to fix things. You think I shouldn't try? You weren't even interested in her until you thought you could change her. Some things don't want to be changed. And be left alone. You sound protective, Mother. I just don't think you should be fiddling with her. Especially after all that stuff you went through. Stuff. All the stuff I went through. Speak. Speak, Abby. Speak. Whoop. Rarf. 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 Excuse me. Oh, Dr. Walsh, this is Dr. Richard Grable. Oh, um. And you said in your letter that uh, she had made verbal sounds. Uh, just that once when she was frightened. Oh. 
Well, what was she afraid of? I don't know. How do you know she was afraid? She looked afraid. How do you know that she wasn't afraid because she verbalized? It could have been an involuntary response. After you've been practicing a while, you'll find it's, uh, it's a bit tricky to make assumptions. Um, now, you said that uh, she only seems to respond to things from her past. Is that right? Correct. Well, did she grow up in Amsterdam? Where the original of this painting is. Maybe there was a copy on the wall where she was kept. Okay, let's, let's just suppose that your diagnosis is correct. Let's say that she is a closet child. Would have been normal, except that she was locked up, received very limited stimulation. Now, are you aware of the critical period theory? No. Well, the current belief is that there's a time in a child's life before puberty when they must learn such things as a primary language. And if they don't, they never will. The part of the brain that controls these processes just simply vanishes. So even if you are right, we're most likely dealing with someone who will never develop language. So if she talked, that would change everything? It would be enormously significant. It would mean she's equipped for all sorts of growth. None of this is even worth discussing, unless we get her background. Everybody go. Move it all. I um, was here about six weeks ago, asking if you knew this girl. Where's she now? With me. She's been with you all this time. Why do you ask? Because if she's been with you all this time, since the last time you asked me, there ain't much chance I've gotten to know her. Now is it? people was looking for me but I didn't want to get mixed up in nobody's business because I had plans to get out of there off that island nothing good ever happened out there when JD Lynch bought the marina he fired my mother and got his wife Esther to do the work but she wasn't paying no mind to nothing that's why I'm the half a man that you see here today. What is it? It's in June. It's gonna help you. How? Well, it's like a dog and an electric light. He ain't never gonna figure out how that light works. And I ain't never gonna figure out how St. Jude works. Damn them people. And damn those lynches, Esther Lynch. I can still hear just what she'd say. Well, it weren't my fault. You were my child. I had to have no time to be looking after him. When J.D. bought the marina, he said, Luane will help you. But Luane was a sedity thing. And J.D. put her on the boat to help him. 
This, this is in what made me mad. JD didn't even name his boat after me. My initial examination suggests to me that we're dealing with a severely retarded adolescent female, an IQ below 35. And not a closet job. The girl is best off with people trained in custodial care. I thought you said you, you didn't thought, have... You thought we didn't do our job. What if I'm right? If the state takes her, they're just going to put her away. She has made progress. To me, she looks the same. I believe you, Dory. But don't you see, that could be part of the problem. If the girl bonds with you and doesn't improve, what then? You want to be Camille's mother? Responsible for everything, always? Can you do that? Sometimes we have to accept things the way they are. It's like the discovery of a mute girl in the mud is no more unusual than a stray kitten. Maybe it just happened, Dory. Why, well, you always have to have somebody to blame. <sighs> what? That first day on the island, there were dogs all over the place. Camille reacts to barking dogs. Right. Everybody's got dogs. Wind.
same material as the dress she was wearing when we found her. Yeah, I guess they're gonna be there for a while. Maybe she washed ashore. Cages don't float. She's from Sister Island. Who? I don't know. Wait a minute. Um, the, uh, Camille had a, a St. Jude medal. Were there any Catholics on the island? No, there's all wet foots over there. Except for Roy Sir Petrie. The crippled boy? That's right, he had a, um, he had a Catholic saint on the grave, on his friend's grave. Guess I'll go talk to him. Dr. Grable said Camille's attachment to this painting disproved my theories, but this proves them. Dr. Dunbar, three, two, two. We can assume that it was on the wall where she was kept. She is only attached to things from her past, and the cage proves what that past was. It proves nothing. Mr. Jameson to administration. Then it suggests that I'm right. And it suggests that Camille's retardation is a result of psychosocial factors. Dr. Grable and I both sensed that you were a Dr. bit too Payne. personally involved in this. Dr. Payne. Mrs. Shelby, right now on one of these floors, we have what appears to be a closet child locked up. You are not going to make me live with that. Mrs. Shelby, you gave me temporary custody, and until you relinquish that custody with a court order, I want her back. Dr. Clayburn. No, no, please, don't get up. I'll join you. I heard you got the girl back, and for the life of me, I can't understand why. I know everything has a reason, so I checked on it, and I found out. Dory, you are not the first person to be hospitalized for psychiatric problems. I think you're kind of holding the girl hostage to some kind of an elixir for your own personal problems. And that is unforgivable. You go ahead and return the girl and Mrs. Shelby, and we'll sit down and talk. In the meantime, Stay out of the clinic.
November 17th. It wasn't the doctor that reached Camille or the teacher. It was pathetic little me, human with that portfolio. In that one moment, we found a new strength through each other. Since we bonded, her fear seemed to have increased, as if she views the whole world as a threat to the tiny security she now enjoys. It eats at her, this fear. I wonder, is this fear specific? Something that happened to her? Is her silence somehow connected with this fear? If we are to make progress, then I sense that we must discover what that fear is before it swallows her whole. Indeed. It has occurred to me that I have yet to see her smile. She can express herself. Somebody had to teach her that. It's a creative act. It's proof that she received substantially more stimulation than you and Dr. Grable suspected. And why doesn't she talk? What's missing? No mouth. I don't even see a face. Mrs. Shelby, we've got to work together. Is there any way I could take back the rude words I spoke to you? I don't mix the personal and the professional, Dr. Walsh. It's no mouth. Why? Well, whoever was keeping her locked up obviously didn't want anybody else to know about her. And how could Camila brought attention to herself? I'm making noise. But she said she did make noise. Once, and Dr. Grable was right. She didn't have the verbal outburst because she was frightened. She was frightened because she had done it, and she assumed that she'd be punished. So the question becomes, if she believed she was going to be punished, what would be worth the risk? And? Something that gave a great pleasure. So if we could find out... Now, I have news for you. Dr. Claiborne has filed a formal protest with the court and I have joined the petition. We are going to get this girl out of here soon. But if I can find out what it is that gives her pleasure, we can use it to get her to make more noises, realize she won't be punished, her fear might disappear, she might talk. And Dr. Grable stated that if she could talk, it would change everything. You are deluded. And Dr. Claiborne explained why. I had been wondering why a promising young surgeon... What does it matter if the girl is improving? For someone who had a nervous breakdown, it matters a lot. Finally caught up with Roy Cyril Petri. Where's he been? Out selling his stuff. Says he's moving to Costa Rica. But I uh, ran him up and down. Or he didn't know nothing about the Well, I'll just keep asking around. They say all bad things have a good reason. A reason? Looking back on my life, I can't begin to count all the reasons why I am who I am. Why I stay knotted up in anger and fear. 
while I lay awake at night, waiting for the demons to scratch at my door. So what makes me think I can help Camille? That I can find some little lost key that will open her up when I'm nothing but a mystery to myself. Now my only hope is to outrun these demons, to save Camille, save myself. At least I know with all my heart that I know the right place to begin. Boy, Cyril. Why are you leaving? came down here to live with Pearl after your mother left you. Are you growing oranges out here, Russell? Who's that saint, Russell? Saint Rock. St. Rock anything like St. Jude? No more questions. Why are you so afraid, Roy Searle? You sent the sheriff out here. And he threatened to keep me from going. To Costa Rica? Roy Searle, why are you leaving the country all of a sudden? Wasn't nothing sudden about it. You've been planning for years. Well, now, why didn't he leave the island with the rest of us? This never was a good place for oranges. Roy, sir, why was Pearl out here the night of the storm? Roy, sir. Roy, sir, I want to know. I don't know. It'll happen so fast. Come on, move it along. Look at that kid over here. The fuck over here. I'm not really. Are you Charlie? Come on, give me a hand. Got some more tents coming up. JD's wife was on the truck? She certainly was. And what happened to her? Hey, man, let's go! I don't know. Hey, clear it out, Judge! But what people saying ain't true. That bitch didn't drown in no storm. Why is she a bitch? A lot of reasons. Them wrenches is just scary people, ma'am. Do you think they had anything to do with the girl? I told you, I don't know about no girl. Roy Searle, I know the girl's from this island. There's never been more than 30 people living out here. It's impossible for you not to know something. Roy Searle, somebody did terrible things to this girl. 
Did they hurt you too? I don't think you did it, Roy Searle, but I know you know who did. You can help me help this girl, please. Please tell me about these people before they hurt someone else. I didn't know much about women. You just like the sound of my voice, don't you? Like but I did know that what Luann showed me, I shouldn't have seen. Over there, darling. Okay, got Come on. Man. But she kept on doing it every chance she got, till finally JD called her at it, and I knew he'd done caught me looking at her too. And after that, Luann disappeared. And I lived in constant fear, knowing that he knew what I'd been up to and was planning to do something about it. Finally, I told Pearl what it was. He asked me questions and went up to see J.D. And that's when I realized there weren't no defense against J.D. Lynch. He could do whatever he wanted, even kill. After I saw Luann was dead, I spent all my time waiting for the day he'd come for me. Did they have any other children? No, ma'am. How long was Luann boarded up? Was it at least nine months? It could have been. And how long ago was it that she died? About 15 years. Were you ever in that house? When I was real little. Was there wallpaper in there or with flowers on it? Yes, ma'am, there was a sort of flower Thank you, pattern. thank you. You've been a big ma help. Ma'am. I ain't through. In the months after Luann died, I thought her spirit was still in the house. I told Mama about it, but then I didn't hear it no more, and I reckoned I'd never heard it in the first place. But then on my 14th birthday, Pearl gave me his trumpet on the condition that I practice it every day, same time and place, no matter what. Ghost baby's back. Shut up with that shit. 
I wasn't about to tell Pearl about the voice on account of he'd probably get himself beat up again. So I just kept on practicing. The first song I learned to play was Prince of Denmark, because Pearl said I could make money playing at weddings. That's what I was playing the day I got the locket. Are you okay? You all right? Now, would someone here tell me what in God's name is going on? A little son of a bitch tried to break into my house. Don't you call my boy a son of a bitch! He's the son and you're the bitch! Shut up! Stop it! He tried to break into my house. J.D. Is that true, son? I was trying to save the singing girl. What are you saying? Didn't sound like her. Well, that's just the silliest thing I ever heard. What is that you have in your hand there? Whose locket is that? Mr. J.D. probably would have killed me that day and if you have Dr. Any idea Claiborne if hadn't shown up to check on my legs. But I never had no more to do with the singing girl, because Mama used the incident as an excuse to run off to New Orleans, and that's when I moved down to Pearl's. Well, I reckon now I really best be going, because uh, well, Mr. J.D., uh, <laughs> He finds out what I done told you, well, he's going to kill me for sure.
Ah, Mao. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 no. No. Now you lead. Good. <laughs> you want me to lead again? on your head. Mayo, you understood me. Camille, put your hands on your head. Okay, put your hands together. Put your hands on your head. I know what 
this time. I've told you ten times I'm not arresting J.D. Lynch because of his walk. Frank, it's more than that. The boy told me. Yeah, all right. Because J.D. killed Luann. That's just what he thought when he was a kid. Frank, I think she died in childbirth. No, she didn't. Bring those over here. She died of cholera. Don't think I haven't been listening to you, Dory. But it doesn't pan out. Not with what your little friend is saying. But Frank. Now you gotta remember that he blames the lynches for his legs. Of course, that doesn't mean Lynch isn't involved. Then you'll talk to him? I've been talking to him. They found his wife up in Memphis. So she did. She ain't said much. Is she all right? I guess she's all right. They're sending her back here on the bus. Esther. Esther Lynch? I have your granddaughter. Everybody knows the truth. seen her. was there? He knew? Of course he knew. He's the one who told us she was pregnant in the first place. But nobody knew the baby was still alive. J.D. He lied his way out of that one. Adon took care of the doctor. It's Linda telling J.D. Please. Let everybody find out. Maybe Dr. Claiborne can take the baby away. Nobody would want it. J.D. said we had to protect her. From what? F from a whispering, he said. Well, because she was the devil's. He couldn't ever make up his mind. Esther, when she was growing up, did she ever talk? J.D. didn't allow no noise. But did she ever learn to talk? Any words at all? It's very important. J.D. was strict about that. He said if she ever learned, she could turn on us. So she never learned? She never... She never talked?
I can't come. I didn't want to leave her because I come from good people. But I, I know they find her, and, and I saw my chance to get loose. All I wanted was to go somewhere and die. But when the Memphis police found me, they said, oh, no, you ain't staying in Tennessee. Hey, St. Louis. She's with me. Why would Daddy give her to you? He said he'd never even seen her before. Well, I, I guess he was scared to what she might do. Scared you might do what? I don't know. I reckon she'd be a handful for a man. They were a strange family, even for Sister Island. Never a clue to what they were thinking. But seven months later, I got a frantic phone call from Esther. Stillborn. I'm sorry. Don't bury it in the gulf. No sense, nothing getting out now. So I falsified the coroner's report. Why? Because it was 1954, and that's the way we did things, to avoid scandals. I thought the child was dead. What a mistake that was. If you would have spoken up about this, Camille's treatment would have been on track a long time ago. I don't think so. Haven't you ever wondered who the father is? Whenever I go out and tell parents that their unwed daughter's pregnant, they always ask one question. Who is the father? J.D. and Esther. They never ask anything. Look there. I keep wondering. Come here, she ain't never wearing the same thing coming in. She had on going out. I'm sorry, Dory, but if you ever wanted an etiology for retardation, this is it. Why did you tell me? We just confirmed it. Camille was J.D.'s daughter. Now that we have, 
I think you better forget about any miracle cures. They want her back. What? They say they thought she was drowned. Frank! And they said that they never knew that you had her. I don't know how it happened, Dora. She was in the greenhouse, and all of a sudden, she just crashed through the glass. I couldn't find you. And I didn't know who to call, but Don't blame me. Well, I heard the right thing. My first thought was to run away. But I guess I didn't. Did you talk to Mrs. Shelby? What? Did you talk to Mrs. Shelby? Oh. Oh, she said, um... She said, um... She said, J.D. being the father, uh, proves that I've been wrong. And that, um, she's, uh, trying to take uh, Camille to an uh, institution upstate. When neither the lynches are I can hurt her. Can't hurt her anymore. She's at a hospital in Gulfport. Mr. J.D. done it. You saw him? No, ma'am. But one thing I've learned, whenever something like this happens, Mr. J.D. always seems to be around. I reckon everybody supposes the girl's touched on account of J.D. being the father and all. Well, I got to thinking about it, and I ain't saying he ain't. But he ain't the only possibility. 
I first saw Dr. Claiborne when I had my accident. After that, I used to see him all the time because he'd come out and do the exercises on my legs that Mama never had the time to do. But it seemed like every time he got done with me, he went to see about Luann. But Luann didn't look sick, so it was something I never could quite understand. Then one day, I finally figured out why. You know I'll does kind of look like you. It's hard to know what to do. You're going to tell Eunice Shempe that your daughter is going to live with my daughter. And if you don't get down to that hospital before they send Camille away, we're going to tell everyone about this. All right, we're going to do that. Long-term severe depression, panic attacks. Who do you think they're going to believe, me? Or an emotionally disturbed mental face? My daughter's condition has nothing to do with this. I heard your confession, too. Really? Well, have you heard this? Obsessive need to control. Unhealthy relationships with other women. All apparently caused by poor parental relationships. Makes everybody's credibility a little suspect. Tell Frank. We'll just tell him exactly what we heard. Oh, please don't give up, Tori. Not now. Don't do to Camille what I did to you. It's the only chance. You ain't talking sad of it. Esther, your husband said he didn't even know her. J.D. says you never even told him you had her. Poor man was beside himself. Esther, your husband had her locked up like an animal. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Then why'd you run away? Storm. Truth is, state is going to take her from both of us. 
think he wouldn't allow it. Why? He didn't even want her before. Well, I guess he's just afraid she might say something. Say something? Did she talk? Did you talk to her? I called her my poor sweet baby. How much did you talk to her? Because I did she talk back. JD! 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 Officer Burton, call your station. Excuse me. Uh, I'm Dr. Walsh. I'm looking for a patient, Dr. Grable's a young girl with uh, cuts on her. Could you tell me what room she's in, please? Grandmother used to talk to you. Do you understand me, Camille? Answer me, Camille. Do you understand what I'm saying? Please, please, come. You do understand me, don't you? Christmas Eve, 1969. I've exhausted all hope of convincing the world that Camille is an intelligent human being, and I now have no choice but to take her to a place where I can keep her out of the hands of those who would lock her away forever. She can think as well as any of us, and she can talk. I now realize that fear is her crippler. Fear prevents her from speaking, and I will use love to chip away at that fear piece by piece. Fair-minded, it is my hope and my plea that the very extremity of my actions will serve to show my sincerity. And I beg for your understanding. And I pray that whomever reads this will realize that everything put forth in this journal is true. With God as my witness, Dory Walsh. Is 
it still your opinion that the girl is irredeemable? Yes, sir. It's not true. Miss Watch, you'll have your day in court soon enough. I'm telling you for the last time, keep quiet or I'll be sending you back to jail. Any proof of the allegations? Proof. No, sir. If this girl could speak for herself, my job would be easier. But since she can't, I really have no choice. The grandparents say that she's been feeble-minded since birth. You agree. And offer no rehabilitative strategy. And neither the allegations of abuse or incestuous relationship are substantiated. And since the first goal of the state is to reunite natural families, it's uh, pretty clear that she should stay with her grandparents. So let's go ahead and get her in here. Where is she? Back at the hospital. Someone tell me what God's name is going on here. Never 
I don't speak because I scared, but they hurt you. I speak because I love you. The final entry. In almost no time, Camille's speech has grown from a tiny trickle to a steady stream as she tries to share with me who she is and who she hopes to become. I now know that there is a future for both of us. We will no longer be islands. And every day, I thank God for bringing this angel to my door.